before movies sucked. Nowadays, most time travel stories focus on one core conundrum. How to change the thing the characters want to change without changing anything else. Whether it's stealing something, fixing something, or stopping something, every traveling sorcerer, superhero, and scientist is given one strong admonishment. Do not interfere with significant historical events. There's this thing called the butterfly effect, and there's no telling the size of the tsunami one little ripple in time might cause. Setting aside, of course, the fact that time travel is a temporal anomaly in and of itself, so there's no fixing one thing without breaking something else. There's always some brief moral or philosophical discussion about the implications of time travel that mainly set the tone for the movie. Fun ride or horror show. And then the rules are either followed or broken as needed to tell the story. But what if your characters didn't care about consequences? What if the heroes in your time travel movie weren't men of science or skilled in prestidigitation? What if the goal of time travel was to raid random periods in history and ransack them for all the plundered riches you could carry? So begins Time Bandits, the brilliant, bizarre, and occasionally brutal movie from Terry Gilliam, a cinematic virtuoso responsible for some of the most unique stories and striking images ever to be captured on film. Released in 1981, Time Bandits presents us with a story that would fit right in with most contemporary anime and manga. But, like most of Terry Gilliam's post-Python work, this is all live action and practical effects. We begin with our hero, Kevin, a boy living in some dreary part of England with all the interests of a normal young lad at that time. One fateful night, a rough-and-tumble group of ne'er-do-wells burst into his room, and before anybody can make sense of anything, a big, scary monster head chases all of them out of the room, which is really surprising considering how they do it. You see, there's this map, and it marks all of the portals on Earth that can be used to travel to different places in time. The only trick is that the portals don't last long, and if you don't understand how to read the map, you could turn up anywhere on Earth at any given time in history, which is how these bumbling bandits wound up in Kevin's bedroom. More out of panicked confusion than anything else, Kevin joins these bandits as they escape this all-powerful supreme being by jumping through one of these portals on the map. At first, the bandits are suspicious of Kevin, but it doesn't take long for them to realize that he could be useful, and they tell him everything. That supreme being is actually THE supreme being that all of these religions go on about. They used to work for him until one of them swiped the map and convinced the others to go raiding and pillaging through time with them. These bandits aren't too bright, but they do have some useful skills and ambitions that make the whole idea seem grand. Why not get stinking rich and hide where the supreme being can't find you? That map literally opens the door to limitless riches. All they have to do is stay one step ahead of their boss, and they're on easy street for millennia. Kevin, being the well-brought-up English lad that he is, questions the morality of these bandits, but has little choice other than to tag along until they can get him back home. Even so, it's not too long before the physical embodiment of pure evil learns of this thievery and deception and determines to acquire the map for himself. So the time bandits chase wealth and riches without fully understanding that, as keepers of the map, they are being chased by powers that could easily corrupt the map and sway Earth towards evil oblivion. They don't think about consequences, they're only in it for the money. And they do travel to some recognizable moments in history— they also travel to other dimensions as evil works his way closer to gaining the map. The casting for this movie is brilliant, and for all the hand-wringing over representation these days, I don't hear anybody standing up for this demographic of underutilized and ignored talent. Time Bandits is yet another example of how some filmmakers were 40 years ahead of whatever cause is being debated on social media these days. David Rappaport, Jack Purvis, Malcolm Dixon, Mike Edmonds, Tiny Ross, and Kenny Baker, yes, the same Kenny Baker that played R2-D2 in the real Star Wars movies, that Kenny Baker, make up the team of Time Bandits each with their own distinct personalities and talents. As they run roughshod through time and place, they run through an ensemble of acting legends, any of whom would have made a director giddy to have in their movie. 
and it's not just Terry's buddies from the Monty Python days either. Eventually, the battle for the map and the future of Earth pits the Time Bandits against pure evil itself, and all seems lost until... well, really, you just have to see how they do it. You can rent this movie for free from your local library, or buy the DVD to add to your collection. Time Bandits is a unique movie with an original story and a once-in-a-lifetime ensemble cast that makes this 40-year-old movie truly timeless. That's right, I said it. If you haven't seen it, watch it. If you have seen it, own it. Add it to your collection before some streaming service decides it's problematic for some reason. And, as always, enjoy the show.